Are we all well? How are we doing? Are we tired? Alive? No, we're all dead. Excellent. I can go on. I like that. Okay, so now we're uh, about to move on to one of the more uh, open and heated discussions of today. Tink is here to uh, lead us on that journey. So with the rise of um, content creation and the platforms such as Twitch and Mixer, YouTube, and uh, any kind of video, you know, content creation and generation. Um, there's been a lot of, uh, the shift in marketing has obviously changed from, you know, advertisements uh, to, you know, uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of personal, it's a, it's a way more personal experience. You know, gaming and marketing has become kind of intertwined in this kind of interesting age. And uh, with that means a lot of people have had to promote themselves in a sea, in a sea of endless fish. Where, how do you, you know, distinguish yourself? How do you uh, make, what do you offer to people that no one else offers, you know? And that's what this panel is really about. Um, it's named Sex, Antics and Drama, Modern Sitcom for a Digital Age. And it really analyzes, you know, the challenge that a streamer has when they start out, the difficulty of the landscape that they have to traverse in order to get anywhere. And are they, what, what are the links exactly that they're willing to go to in order to get there in the first place? So, um, Joining Anti Tinkerbell, obviously on this panel, our, our fellow content creator and mixer partner at Nozbox, uh, and Geeky Lulu, Unicorn Gaming, and Shanzai Asana. Now, Tinkerbell herself has a very rich history actually in streaming. She started out on Twitch in 2014, was it? 2014, yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. In the, in the before times, in the long, long ago. Oh, the long, long ago. Yeah. Yes, I remember. Oh, God, when it barely worked. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, you know, a nice generation of 20,000 followers. Yeah, it was uh, 20,000 followers for, I was there for about two years. I started off as one of the uh, female Call of Duty Black Ops 2 FPS players. Because I, when I started off being a streamer, I look at the analytics of how can I actually reach an audience. Because I did it like a marketing, like how do I, how do I swim amongst all these other fish? Yeah. And uh, there was a lot of guys playing Call of Duty, and I'm pretty decent at the game. So I was like, you know what, I think I can, you know, get a little bit of an advantage here and see if I can yeah. maybe turn the tables and the fact that I was Irish because there was a lot of Americans there as well and I think there was one older Irish fella that was on it as well but uh, that's how I that's how I got up in the game. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously in 2016 you moved to Mixer where you've been incredibly successful uh, which is a platform obviously of, uh, owned by Microsoft that's right. um, who have connections to Xbox and you've been featured twice now is it on the front? Um, I've been featured enough times. At least a hundred times. Yeah. And you've got 50,000 followers now? Isn't so, well, not really, but getting there. Over 600,000 uh, views in less than a year. Epic. Yeah. Absolutely epic. <laughs> and um, I know that, uh, that you have uh, an achievement also. I have an achievement from Xbox, yeah. yeah so, uh, X to you. That's right. Um, when we were introducing the Xbox dashboard, um, uh, for, for Mixer, it was Beam at the time, mind you, and we're introducing that idea. I was one of the first few people to get onto it. And uh, I was beaming with excitement, and I tweeted out to the guys going, I can't believe I made the calendar, because it's a big achievement as a, well, I considered myself a small streamer back then, and I was like, oh, this is a massive achievement, and then the guys on Xbox made me a, made me into an achievement saying, beaming with excitement, at, and I think about, call us when you're famous. And that was put out on Twitter to over 11 million followers on Twitter. And I just shot myself. <laughs> and it was amazing. And uh, yeah, I, I, I like rubbing that into trolls' faces. They're like, oh yeah, you're crap. I was like, really? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to see this tweet? <laughs> Do you want to see that tweet? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm uh, sorry. to show you the metrics behind who likes me. Fight me. Just fight me. Yeah, get out <laughs> So I'm going to leave it uh, to you guys then to discuss and this difficult and very expansive topic of you know uh, what people are going to what people what lengths people are going to go to. Obviously, Logan Paul has been a big thing in the last year, and uh, that disgrace. Uh, yeah. And obviously, like um, you know things like Wreckful, you know, going around Japan in a jumping schoolgirl outfit, which was one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> very uncomfortable for everybody involved. Well, it depends. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, 11,000 people argued with me, so, you know, you can't really, you know, these are the things that we, these are the questions we have to ask. What is, what are the boundaries of what we're willing to do, and what are the ethics behind these boundaries? So, take it away, guys. Thank you very much. Um, a follow on what Arcel was saying as well, we're talking about, mostly about the antics drama, and, and also the most controversial thing to talk about is the sex. Um, being used as a tool to get ahead in the, uh, not the gaming industry, but the content creation industry more so than anything else. And um, I think it's, it, I think it's the, one of these things that 
we as like personal IRL people, uh, we sit down and we kind of talk about it in you know private, but we don't really talk about it in public as well, which is which can be a bit taboo as well to talk about in public. And I don't see why we can't uh, address a few of these things. And if anyone has any questions out there uh, towards the end of, of this panel, you're very, very welcome to ask. And there's there's no judgment in here, I can tell you that, after when we speak about all this stuff. Um, so uh, just to give you an introduction, I'm just going to introduce the lads here. So, Nata. Hi there, uh, my name is Nozabox. I'm a content creator on Mixer. Um, I've been there for nearly two years now, partnered for just nearly two years as well. Um, I'm a Battle Royale streamer from Fortnite back when it first came out, never again. Uh, stick with PUBG, stick with Realm Royale, stick with uh, the new Arts of Nine. Um, I am just under 300,000 views now in just under two years. Um, but yeah, that, that's me for myself, uh, Geeky Lulu. Hi, I'm Geeky Lulu. I'm a cracker streamer on Mixer. Um, I stream a lot of shooter games. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I probably have about 100,000 views um, on Mixer so far, and I've been on there for about a year. Um, I love doing what I do, it's just one of those things, you know? <laughs> yeah, and Geeky, you live in Ireland, but you're not from Ireland. <laughs> no, I'm not actually. I'm from Portugal. Live in Ireland for the last 17 years and I sound American. <laughs> there you go. Hello, I'm Shante. I work at an award winning creative agency. Um, I know, all views on my own. Uh, I'm not a streamer. Um, I work as our creative development and digital media manager, so um, we do a lot of influence marketing. And the reason why we have ourselves here is because it's always good to have an outsider's perspective, especially if you're trying to appeal to those businesses as well, which obviously you're the great media for. And um, trying to get your own content out there and trying to network, it's very important that you kind of build up these relationships. So it's very important that we have her here as well to give an outsider perspective of what they see, because we all see the antics inside what we do. But for a business point of view, when they're looking in, it's important to understand that side of it as well. So that's why she's here. Yep. <laughs> so we're going to kick off with just talking about antics. We're going to leave the juicy sex to the end, in case anyone's kind of uh, wondering about this. But um, we're going to talk about the antics, and we're going to talk about personas. And I was only kind of thinking about this when we were talking about topics like personas and gimmicks and people who are introvert versus extrovert, and how does that um, influence your channel, and how does that build your content as a uh, content creator. Um, for me personally, uh, persona is a big thing as well, that if you watch someone for so long on a YouTube channel or anything like that, and you're always thinking to yourself, God, I wonder if they're like that in IRL, do you know what I mean? And um, for me personally, uh, I've been to too many events just this year alone, in the last six months, I've been traveling an awful lot, and I wanted to meet those people that I technically work with or work for, to understand them a bit better. Um, Kind of going into that kind of uh, into that questioning of that. Do you feel that like I'm gonna go with Nazi? Do you feel personas can obviously feel not authentic when it comes to when you're meeting these people and how they present themselves on stream? Okay, so the biggest persona we all know, not to disrespect, the man is a living persona. Um, I, I'm not overly keen on the persona side of streaming for the sheer fact it's. It's like having a split personality. You, you've got to be one person off stream, one person on, and it's going to leak into both. You are at one point, it will leak into the, your real life. You are going to become the doctor of disrespect, which that's a really bad idea. Um, Is that moustache? Uh, <laughs> leave the porn stash alone. Okay. Uh, right, so, I mean, I've, I've seen quite a few streamers, and I, I do think it's hard to keep that persona, hard to keep that entertainment value. Um, I mean, it, it can't be easy to have to be a fake character and then try to be yourself. Um, I, I believe IRL is best. Be yourself, be on stream, be truthful. Personas aren't needed in my eyes. Going on that as well, probably already geeky Lulu about this, do you feel that you have to have a split personality in order to maintain some kind of sanity between who you are as a streamer, content creator, to how you are at home as like, you're a mother like I am, and how you present yourself, especially with kids. Now I understand that you're a teen streamer, so you obviously have that mammy mentality stuck in. Not all the time, I think like, I think when you're a streamer, like it's, it's I don't, there is, you can't have a persona, you can't change yourself completely to be a different person on stream. 
But I do feel as a streamer, you do have to hype yourself up a little bit. You do have to have like a lot more energy than you would as in like, if I'm just here talking to you guys, I don't need to hype it up and go, oh my God, guys, hey, what's going on? Like, but on stream, you do need to keep that so you can grasp your viewers and you can get their attention. So you do need to put on a bit of a persona. It doesn't mean you have to change who you are. But as fact as my mommy going into it, sometimes it does. Like, I, sometimes I feel like I might be a little too hard. <laughs> well, not hard. I know you just like me, so. <laughs> I'm just here. like, this is tea. Like, but this is just like the, my mom mentality, you know? Like, it's, I get, well, you know, just worried, and it's just who I am, though. So. And Shan, as well, looking on the outsider's perspective, like if you're going in to uh, to make a deal or to make business with someone who's an influencer like ourselves or whoever it is, and um, you would look at their content, you probably look at what they're doing online and everything like that. And if you were to meet them in, in, in real life, so to speak, to talk about business and everything like that, can that play in a, in a positive or a negative way when you're looking at that person to be part of the affiliate? Well, I mean, the main thing about like your persona online versus like in real life is are you professional in real life? Like that's what really matters. Like um, apart from the fact that like you, you can't be too controversial, like no brand really wants to work with somebody who, I mean, okay, Logan Paul is like the prime example. Like Disney dropped him as soon as he said like, something bad. Yeah, exactly. With negotiator, like, which is the nicest way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, um, so like it, it really does depend, like as long as you're professional, that's what really matters, and then also don't be too, like don't say Bad controversial words. things on that. Yeah. On and going, going into that as well about um, the, the persona part and talk about um, introverts and extroverts, like I know myself, I'm a big bully person in IRL and streaming, and everyone knows that from, from Adam, so I'm not really... I don't have a persona, but I do like to be quiet in my own time when I'm asleep. That's fine. Um, but I know um, I know a lot of streamers that would be uh, very, very, um, very out there on their stream, and they're always very bubbly and they're very forward and very helpful. But I know as well that deep down, these are some people who were actually originally, you know, introverts. Yeah, I mean, um, I think a persona also works if someone's having a um, depressive state. All right, anxiety. Uh, anxiety, depression. Uh, sometimes people use a persona to pull themselves out of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a couple of guys in my community that do that themselves. They're very, very, very outgoing on stream. And when you meet them, they're like very timid and shy. And like, well, <laughs> um, but it, it's their way of helping them to stream. It, they use that persona to pull themselves out. Yeah, so it pulls a lot of like, especially I know ourselves here, we talk about that and probably going over to Geeky Lulu because I know we've talked about um, when it comes to mental health and I know myself that everybody suffers from something, I do as well, um, that streaming can actually help a lot of people who are introvert or shy or, or suffering whatever to help get themselves out there. Yeah, no, I agree. I, as you know, I've had depression since I was 12 and I've been reading about anxiety and when I started streaming, I was really shy. I didn't really talk to anyone and I'm still a little bit like that. Once, If I don't know you, I'm just kind of, hi, how are you, you know, type of thing. But streaming kind of helped me get out there and, and just be myself, but in a different form. And it's not, like it's, I don't, I don't think it's me having a persona. I think it just actually helps me talk to people and, and it's it's just helping me be a more positive person. My community has just been amazing with that. Um, so it has helped me in my mental attitude and the way I think and see things. So it does help, gaming and streaming, it does help. So what could you add to that as well? I know that you don't stream very often. You've actually streamed on my channel today for the yeah. first time. And first time streaming. First time, she's like, oh, I'm nervous. It's like, it's okay, they're human. Um, <laughs> but I know that it's like, Especially in a, it, I know that in, in a business perspective, you are involved in the gaming industry, and I know that you're a gamer as well. And do you think that that kind of the gaming side of it does help a lot of people in that way to become more um, out there? Uh, yeah. Just, but can I just clarify quickly? I'm at PewDiePie, obviously. Disney you're you're fine. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, does gaming help people through mental health? Is your question? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, of course. I mean, there are so many elements, like I was just listening to um, the uh, CEO of King Grim speaking, and um, he was talking about how 
about like esports and education and video games and education. And there are so many skills that you pick up through um, playing video games. Like there's teamwork and cooperation, and I think like streaming really. Pr I just hit it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I think streaming really plays into that as well because you have like that. Con well, I mean, when your chat is nice and you know you have good people in the chat, then you have like that constant reassurance, like oh, you know, you have a positive community behind you, and you have like um, this like really great influence in your life, in your life, right? And even on the gaming side of it, like your team building, there's social skills there, there's reliability and trust. You're solving puzzles. And it's also like that, um, like there's a YouTuber called Gabby Hanna and she speaks about her mental health a lot and I think that's really helped her community on YouTube because she's made it comfortable yes, to speak openly honest. about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I actually wanted to add on to that if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, I do think it's really important what you just said that it is so important to be open about what you're going through because at the end of the day sometimes as streamers i'm, I'm sure you guys agree a lot of people think we're, we're robots and we don't have feelings and we don't go through things but we do we, we are humans we still go through things and so it's important to be open and honest with your community if you need a break if you need to just wind down and maybe not stream for a few days to take care of yourself that's super important to be open with them and let them know but even to add to that like a lot of people i, I know that a lot of our, our communities as well and i know a lot of lads as well they some people in our community sees us as almost superheroes and i know it's very egotistic and i know and i know it sounds very weird when i say this i think it's weird when i say this and um, they find us very inspiring and it's it's okay to show your human side that you're not having a good day and you think it's ideal that you, you shouldn't go ahead with the stream or you shouldn't do x y and z to make it more comfortable for yourselves and um, it gives more authenticity to the person you are as a um you know as a human as well and uh, i think that's very important to be open and honest because at the end of the day we're not superheroes you know I twist my ankle like everyone else, <laughs> even if I am sitting down. Um, so She's done that answer. I have. I have. Good times. I'm sure there's a clip there somewhere. Anyway, uh, getting on to uh, a more more of a nice, uh, tender, tasty subject of the drama, but within the streaming industry, and a lot of people think that like you just turn on a channel, you watch, they play Fortnite, they f and blind, and then they go home, and then that's it. The reality is, is that like you could have uh, people coming into maybe your channel saying, "Well, so and so has that many numbers," and you're like, "Okay, well that person's like poking the bear." Um, but going into that, like talking about conflict between streamers, and uh, it's never a dull moment because it's kind of like high school as well. And uh, I know you and I, we've never had conflict, but we like to watch drama unfold. Oh yeah, the, the drama from any mixing platform, from Mixer, from Twitch, to YouTube gaming, Facebook, Facebook gaming, that's, um, it, it's great sometimes to watch the conflict. The, it, it starts out as friendly competition, and then someone does something better, and it's, it, it becomes drama. And it's fun to watch. You sit there, you, and occasionally you do throw a comment, and you throw a poke about it, and you just sit back and go, well, that was really funny. It was, it's something that shouldn't be, um, I say it shouldn't be done. I don't think encourage the drama is fun, but because I've had it done to me, I've had it done to me. I've had drama. I've had uh, a lot of abuse from streamers when I was on Twitch. Um, hence why I went to Mixer because I was succeeding uh, first year there, doing really well, and I was getting more drama from other streamers because they were jealous of what was going on. Uh, of I was playing the same games as them, and it's, it, it, you get the backstabbing, the Chinese whispers, and it, it gets dramatically out. Of, very quickly. Well, how do you deal with that, though? And I know how I, I deal I with it. I left the platform. <laughs> yeah, but you moved house, okay. It's probably not ideal for everyone, but... No, like... it, it basically, you, you basically confront it. I did confront it, I pulled the person aside to Discord, we had a chat, we had a discussion, and it was one of the reasons I left Twitch, for the sheer fact of I couldn't be done with the drama. So it was a, have a chat, have a conversation, we cleared the air, I still go to his channel now. I will go to his channel, I'll go support him because he's doing well now, he's finally picked up. Uh, and we're still friends, but I did leave the platform because of that drama. Well, do you not agree, Geeky Lula, that sometimes it can be high school? And I know that between closed doors that we already have our own personal dramas with people that we're conflicting with sometimes. And, like, and, and I know that that can that can cause communities to really kind of go heads where people are not coming in and out. I mean, in fairness, uh, like, 
like you, I, I have been through my fair share of drama. Not that I want it or anything, but sometimes it happens. People are gonna hate on you because you're succeeding or because you're doing better than them or because maybe you're just doing good. Whatever the reason may be, it's, it's, sadly it's gonna happen. Um, but personally yeah. for me, I just kind of try to stay away from that stuff. I, I don't really get involved. Um, there's been situations where I have known where other streamers have said stuff about me publicly in chats where I've seen it and stuff. But, it, you know, it is what it is. If you're, if you're going to be that person, that's fine because at the end of the day you're just being negative and it's only going to hurt you and it's not going to hurt me because I'm going to be the bigger person and not be like that. And that's usually how I deal with the drama. I don't know about, about you guys, but that's just me personally. I ban people. <laughs> or ban. Not ban, but it works. A hammer also. I have a lot of people. It works, man. Yeah. But especially to do on the industry side, like, have you ever had anyone who is, like, maybe an influencer or a content career, like, have drama between the people you're meeting in the middle with and, you know, the developers? Like, have you ever experienced any drama where someone's just truly unhappy and they're just negative and they don't want to do this? Or is it a case that everyone's an adult these days? Or have you ever come across anything like that at all? I don't know if I can talk about that. <laughs> no, you don't have to <laughs> specifically <laughs> talk about it. I don't mean that you can talk generally. Of course, it's like, um, it really depends on personalities, doesn't it? it of course, it's like, there's been times where, you know, there is conflict between different parties, but um, it depends, like, you just have to handle it professionally. Like, there's, there's, yeah, it just, it really depends. Yeah, because it's, it's money at the end of the day, or, or business opportunities at the end of the day, and the last thing you need to see is two people putting heads, especially in the, uh, the business side of it, because you're like, I'm, I'm partnering up you with this guy, you're making me look bad. Yeah, yeah you, have to, you always have to be professional, sorry. Yeah. yeah. And you have to like think about your long-term relationships with these developers as well. It's, it, I mean, if you're going to act unprofessionally, they're not going to want to work with you again, yeah. obviously. So. Well, yeah, of course. Like, um, but going in, going, sticking with yourself, when we're talking about um, uh, the drama and the the, uh, the the high school BS of it, um, like when you're reviewing someone to look at, okay, well, this could be a business opportunity. Do you review their their Twitter or how they give slander or anything like that to make sure that that person's the right fit, or would it be considered that okay, that was ages ago, that drama happened and. We're going to continue on or like does that fall into the, the the review yeah of course i mean anything that you put out online is permanent to be like honest with you so everything's going to be considered when you're when you know we're looking at you for a campaign or something um and uh, like video game developers and publishers they're, they're very careful about who they work with because your reputation is going to affect their game or is going to affect their brand and brand is like something massive. That's like that's there's money behind that, you know. Like they're not just gonna throw away their own reputation just because you have a large following or something. There are so many people out there who have large followings. <coughs> so yeah, well, that's fair. And um, we'll, we'll continue on with the drama. And one topic that we all can relate to is trolling and abuse. <laughs> And um, <laughs> every time I bring this up in conversation, it's always the same reaction. It's so weird. Um, talking about like trolling and, and abuse, um, to give it you guys an idea in case you don't know what I'm on about. It's like people who, who, who purposely go into the channel to disrupt or cause uh, drama within uh, the, the content being rolled out. So, like, um, I know that uh, one of our guys here, Unicorn Gaming, uh, unfortunately couldn't be here. Um, I've seen him deal with a lot of trolling, a lot of drama, and um, I'm sure he, he won't mind mentioning this, uh, like for me to mention this. Like, Unicorn Gaming is a, a, a homosexual male. He has a, a high-pitched voice for a male man, and uh, he's fantastic at what he does. He doesn't take BS. He's, uh, he's a very professional, well-spoken uh, gentleman as well. And any time he's playing a certain game, he would get abused. I mean, viciously abused, to the point where he um, uses the abuse to actually get ahead. So, like, the, the most funny thing, and I'm sure he'll always say that, is, uh, why do you sound like a girl? And he goes, if you see that pink button that says sub, if you click that, okay, I'll tell you a reason why. And they do it. And then, no, oh, you just subscribe to him. He goes, because I just sound like that. And then he gives back the same abuse that way. Uh, it's, it's very interesting to watch. And I know um, 
not say like you and me are PUBG players as well, and I, I'm sure we get a lot of criticism on how we play the game. Oh yeah, we're, we're always the the bush wookie or the the terrible shot. Or or the camper. Oh yeah, the camper. Yeah, not strategically placing myself in front of a building, but yeah. But how do you how do you handle that? I know like we have moderators dedicated to this. Like, has it ever gotten to the point where the the, the trolling or abuse gets so bad? that it disrupts the channel and, oh, and yeah. throws you off your Yeah, door. definitely. I mean, you'll get to the point where you'll ban one, it'll come out with another one. You'll ban one, it'll come out with another one. Um, I think at one point I had to tell my mods to stop while I had to fully investigate a report. Um, and it was going for about two hours where this person just kept coming out with new accounts just to troll, just to troll. Um, you, you just, you have to deal with it. It's, it's one of those things in the stream you have to deal with. Yeah, um, but even if that does it, does it the thing following up on that? It, does, do you feel that with the trolling and abuse, but with the drama of everyone getting kind of lifted off in uh, that? Oh yeah, I mean, luckily if the, the community sort of riles up behind you, they're all, they're all trying to help. They're all trying to tell the troll to do one and get lost. Then, then they get a bit out of hand occasionally. It's just, um, but yeah, you're right. It, it does get out of hand very very fast. And like, how do you like? I know I I'm a mod in your channel. I'm a terrible mod in his channel, but um, she's the biggest troll I have. I am the best troll you have. Yes. Um, but like, how do you once once everyone starts getting riled up, how do you uh, how do you settle it down? Like, I know how you settle it down, but I would like you to explain to lovely people how do you settle it down and keep everyone relaxed and then kind of sort it out, or do you kind of get to the point where it gets too dramatic and everybody's falling okay. apart? Uh, I'm an 18 plus streamer. I don't stream teen, so what I say on stream is what I think, um, without trying to get too explicit on the, on the stage. Um, I, I do it in graphic, I do tell them what I think, I do tell them what I think about themselves for being such a trash person for doing this. I'm trying to be good. Um, <laughs> again, again, it, it's very easy and plus, and it makes the rest of the chat laugh, they quite like it. They like the fact that I don't stand for any trolls, I don't stand for any troll, and it's just a quick, I shout, I rage, I pull it back down, everyone laughs, the trolls are gone, and we move on. Nice. And I know Gigi Lulu, because she's a, a teen streamer, and she's, you know, she's very, she's very nice when it comes to a certain battle royale game, don't, don't nice. talk about it. Um, like, I know that, especially now going into, tipping into one subject that a lot of people get, oh, for God's sake, especially us being ladies in the streaming industry mm -hmm. and I know like we should be in the kitchen making sandwiches and all this stupid shit and um, wait people still say that though I, it's so weird that was, right that was on blast so weird. Too. I know uh, I still think that they should grow up and make their own oh, sandwiches right. but you know I didn't push them out of my body but I know that you know funny thing is I actually used to make sandwiches as a job years ago so that's, that's so weird at least you know how that's <laughs> yeah. so weird um, <laughs> But I know, like, um, for us, in especially in our position as as female streamers, and a lot of people often think that because we're female streamers, we get a lot more views. But you also don't take into consideration that we get more views, uh, in, in what we do. And I know that you you are very good at handling some drama in your chat when people start coming in and causing grief. Sometimes. So, sometimes. So it can it can get a bit weird. Um, Going on the point of you saying it's it's harder as a, as a woman to be streaming, um, I actually had a situation where I was streaming one day and then um, someone on Instagram messaged me and they were like, oh, you've got partner, congratulations, I was wondering because you're a woman. And I was midstream and I flipped. And I just, I actually went on a rant for like 30 minutes on stream to explain that it's not because I'm a woman, it's because I know what I'm doing and it's because I worked hard to get to where I am. Like it was just, I just felt so insulted that you, that this person thought that they were so righteous to say as it's because you're a woman, because you got partnered. It, it's not how it works. You have to work hard for where you want to be, and that's how I got to where I am. And then going off with the trolls, I get a lot of whys and you suck. So I have I have done this awesome thing with my bot. My bot is an absolute savage. If you don't know what a bot is, it's just a little thing that has commands and it, you can make it automated responses. So every time you type in like you or or why or can I play or well, give you the word can just word can mm -hmm. my my bot just goes nope and it does a map of face and it just like times them out for five, ten minutes and they'll come back, ask the same goddamn question again mm -hmm. and they'll just get timed out again. And it's just hilarious to watch. Like I love watching it. And I'll I'll even say it. I'll say it on the channel like 
don't ask, can you play? It's an open lobby. It's in my title, just join in. No, they still ask the same question. <laughs> they, they just can't read. <laughs> I just keep going. Yeah. But I do get a lot of abuse that you were talking about, you know, as a female. It's it. Some of the things that I, I'm not going to say what I get, because it's just absolutely awful. And nobody should see that. And you, it's just not things that you, would, you wouldn't say that to someone in real life. Why would you come into someone's chat and say that to somebody? It's just not appropriate. There is just things that I've seen that I that I wish I hadn't seen. People that can be really, really vicious on the internet. But I think you have to just kind of, you can't let that stuff get to you because once you start letting it affect you, it's gonna affect what you're doing. And it's sometimes it's really hard. Like I, I have, there has been times where I have literally just stopped my stream for 10 minutes and I've cried like, you know, off stream. I've, I've went and cried and cried it out and just come back and after I recomposed myself and you know, doesn't happen a lot. Most of the time I just kind of go, oh yeah, whatever, you know, I suck, that's fine. Why are you still here? Like, why are you still watching me <laughs> if I suck so bad? <laughs> But maybe because we're, I don't know, don't know. I, know, I, don't know. I don't know, I don't know. Just, <laughs> I must be good. You must be that good yeah. that they just want to put you down to make them cells look good. That's, that's cute. Um, but there's one, do you, have you ever experienced where like you have built a relationship with yeah, with, with the two parties together that um, maybe a, a promo or a launch of maybe a game that hasn't gone so well that maybe somebody reaches out to you guys and be like, well, I heard so-and-so associated with you. That was such a bad idea. How dare you? Have you ever had any kind of conflict or any trolls coming towards the company for Maverick to do that? No. I'm so <laughs> lucky. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. I don't know. I, well, I mean, I'm in the wrong industry. <laughs> <laughs> well, personally, I haven't ever experienced it. Like, um, what about as a gamer yourself? Like, I know uh, as a gamer, if I wasn't streaming, I'd probably get like tons yeah, of views. We know you play Paladins. We know you, you, no. we know you play Paladins. <laughs> 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 Um, so, I mean, I guess since I like entered this industry, the number of times that it has been suggested to me to, you know, start streaming, or like if I st if I tell people that I want to start streaming, I'm suggested to become a certain type of streamer to get views or whatever. But it's just like it's such a problematic thing in itself that like somebody would suggest that and suggest that that is the reason that women, like female streamers, get views. Like it's just. Yeah, well, if, yeah. following into that topic as well, because I know I've, I have loads of things, loads of views to ask. Don't worry, I, I got this nailed. But going going into talking about that, and I know it's the most controversial thing we could ever talk about here in in, in this industry that we live in is that a, that some people can use sex as a tool as well, and a lot. It's a very ooh, we don't really like in. I like green and monkey. Just saying. I've seen it. This is really one of friends, you know. Um, <laughs> but like talking about um, uh, going going on what yourself was saying is that like a uh, that sex can be used as a tool to get ahead. And now that uh, we're now down a good few years down the line from Justin TV to Twitch, going in from Bean to Mixer and and uh, Hitbox to Showcast and all this all this mad stuff that now uh, those people who've been introduced to that side of it, I don't like. Saying stuff like that, the assumption is there, and I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. Um, 